Hi, Chagai. Hi. It's lovely to have you here in Cultural Vaz, meet with Sorit. And I know you've come especially to Israel for three days only between all your performances. Hi, That's you. right. Yeah, it's amazing. And we're here in the Tel Aviv Museum for the concert with um, Hillel Tzori in the Ark of Castri of Beethoven. Uh, how do you manage to do it all? How do you manage to come for three days and run around all over the world? How do you have a life like this? Well, got used to it and actually worked all my life for, to be able to do it. But sometimes there are uh, very busy periods, and I'm happy I could squeeze that concert. It's amazing. We're very proud to have you. Yeah. Pleasure. H how do you mix it? Uh, um, uh, I would say, I'd say differently. Is it something that you love most, mainly to play chamber music, solo, to teach? Yeah. What is it you, your well, biggest love? Well, I think uh, the biggest love is the music and the, the violin in the business. So uh, I'm very happy and actually fortunate to be able to mix them all three uh, disciplines. Amazing, and we're having a special piece today, the Archibucas uh, Trio, and this is the last trio that Beethoven writes for piano trio. Mm -hmm. um, there's something very noble in this music, yeah. and um, perhaps the most um, influential and effective trio for, for Beethoven. Um, what does it do to you when you play the Beethoven Trio? Well, this is a absolutely a major, major work. It's a masterpiece. So yeah. you know, just. Starting the, the beginning of this archduke, it's, it's already a, almost a religious experience for me. It's, a, it's a monumental in size and importance. Majestic. Yeah, majestic, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so full of colors and different, different directions of expression. So um, I really, it's one of the pieces that I never fed up playing. You love playing this Absolutely, yeah. yes. And it's... In a way, for me, to play this piece is more like a concerto or a symphony. It's not a very regular trio. It's not three movement piece. It's more monumental, as you say. Yeah, yeah. Of course, piano part is uh, even more developed than the other ones, more virtuosic than the other instruments. But uh, we have our difficulties as well. <laughs> but the music is so great that you know we, we don't think about that. And would you say that it's better than in his extremes? Would you say that it's a mirror to his own life in a way? This music. Well, in a way, you know, the, the area he wrote that, I have to say that I found more tenderness, mm -hmm. uh, less angle than other periods, uh, the beginning, you know, also this violin sonata number 10, the G major. Um, it's very beautiful, very, very singing, and not so much of the, uh, in other pieces you can find more uh, angle, perhaps aggressions. Um, of course, you have the angles here as well, the sforzatos mm -hmm. and the big surprises, but uh, he does it harmonically, not so much uh, in the beginning with Sforzandos. Um, so it's more uh, I mean, I would say calmer in a way mm -hmm. and very happy last movement. Yeah. yeah, it's like a rondo and yeah. a big surprise. Just last question. Um, you're playing a lot of chamber music. Yeah. Um, it's amazing. You have lots of recordings uh, together with our non areas the pianists. What is it that you find the most important thing in chamber music making? In your partners, what do you, what do you well, feel is more important? You know, it, it's a way of communication. Mm -hmm. um, we beat uh, different people and over different pieces of music, and you start a dialogue through the music with your partners on stage and with the audience, you know, the whole. So it's very intriguing, it's very interesting always, and never is the same twice. So that's what keeps me fresh. Be beautiful dialogue. Okay. Absolutely. within the music and without in the context. Yeah. Thank you very, very much for being with us. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.